Hello guys, welcome back to the trickway with Grey and I'm Trev. Hello. Um, <laughs> well, Notice the giant logo in the back. Welcome back. He puts Notice that. He puts that on just in on case he forgets. He puts Notice that on. on the shirt. And wait. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I, I get into trouble if I don't have the mug. So. It gives me the kind of look. He doesn't say anything. It just gives me the look. Um, so the he's got the shirt too, people. If you haven't seen it, yet. if I if I put a logo behind me, that's just come on, focus, you goddamn piece of. Um, <laughs> hey, um, if if I have the logo behind me, it's TTW Inception. Because yeah, look, look, uh, look, Gray, just hold your mug in front of you at kind of in front of your yeah. mic or something at the right angle where you've got. See, there's like three levels. It's too much. Yeah. No, nah, that's never too much. <laughs> um, advertise, advertise. Gray, why are we back today? What are we covering today? Why are we well, doing it? We we try to come up with some ideas for specials and actually Trev came up with a good idea called Bad Guys in Star Trek. So we're gonna kinda go over some of that. I should have put bad guys in Will we in cover Star every Trek. single bad guy in Star Trek? No, mm. we're not gonna cover every single bad guy in Star Trek, but we've got enough to talk about. There's too many. Oh god, yeah. There's some we don't even remember. There's too many antagonists and and ones that I've forgotten about probably. And I think sure. I said last time we were on, uh, we were talking about what Star Trek might look like in 2024. That mm. we wanted to do some interesting, cool specials, not specials for the sake of it, and do them every couple of weeks or so, just to keep right. ourselves ticking over till season five of Discovery, um, right. and then. We'll go back to reviews that way. We might try them live. But yeah, we thought Bad Guys of Star Trek. Not in Star Trek. That's an awful title, Trevor. That sounds much better. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. There's so many to, to go through, and we're just literally chewing the fat. Um, who we like, who we dislike, and why. Um, and we'll just, we'll just go through some of the things we mentioned down here at the moment then. The first thing I thought of, and it's no particular order, no particular order here at all. Right. Um, was the Klingons grey. Now, yep. my I, my first line here is they're both good guys and bad guys. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of accurate. Do you agree with that? Do you disagree yeah. with that statement? Yeah, that's probably perfect. That's, the, that's the, the one interesting thing with the Klingons being both good and bad. And it was interesting that, you know, the Federation made peace with them because that was the last thing we thought was going to happen, you know, years ago. Yeah. And it was nice to see something different happen, you know, and stuff. It doesn't mean, I mean, I remember when they first started talking about it, people were going like, oh, no, the Klingons are going to turn into, you know, babies and they're not going to do anything and they're not going to be tough anymore and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I remember they, there was a big outcry on that wow. one. And then once it happened, everybody kind of like, okay, this isn't so bad. Yeah. They're, you they're know. Not, they're not, they're, they, they're the guys you love to hate. Um, they've yeah. been around since they are Star Trek, aren't they? They are. I don't know if they're the sure. they're, they're not the first alien species, but they're the first major alien species to come into Star Trek and oh, the yeah. first they're, kind of proper one bad of the, guys. Uh, one of the originals, along with the Romulans and stuff. So it makes yeah. you know makes total sense. And, and what? So it was. It's just, and you know, I don't think there would have been. Well, I'm not going to say there wouldn't have been, but I think they're one of the reasons why they came around to also making uh, peace with them or whatever, having a, a treaty with them is be is because Worf kind of pushed that one along. Yeah, um, Worf's Worf just uh, was it ancestors pushed it along, and of course Worf is a perfect example. And I think also everybody loves the Klingons, so everybody wanted to see more Klingons. So how are you going to see more Klingons? Well, you have Worf, and then Worf goes over to Deep Space Nine, and then Worf pops up in the movies and then other Klingons are, I mean, look, there's so many cool Klingons that we all love in, you know, and stuff. And, uh, I like, like, uh, like, uh, Kang and, and, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? I can't remember now. <laughs> Kalos. Kalos. That's it. Original. And then there's other ones too. And yeah. they all pop up in the deep space nine and you're all just going, yeah. And they had episodes with, uh, with the trio. Uh, I can't remember everybody's name, but the, the, the old warriors that be, well, they became old warriors. Um, that they had originally done in the uh, TOS. Uh, TOS and stuff, <clears throat> and then they brought them back. Um, I, forgot, I should know their names. This is stupid, but it was it was still really good to see them 
and see what they were like and stuff. And of course, they always make fun of Worf because he's kind of he's a Klingon, yes, but he's also been was raised by uh, humans, you know, Starfleet parents, humans. He's so. got the perfect mix of the two cultures, very much exactly. so, actually. Bit like Spock in that respect, actually. He's yeah, got a blend of both. So. Yeah. Um, I, and he was made fun of when he was a kid because of it. But you bullied, know, so was Belana as well. Very much yeah. so. I felt sorry for her, actually. Um, yep. my, see, it was, let's take Worf out of the situation for a moment because I was going sure. to say my favourite and then not say Worf, but then he is Mr. Klingon, so take him aside for a moment. My, sure. my, my personal favourite Klingon of all time is General Martok. That guy in oh, Deep yeah. Space Nine was bloody brilliant. He had such yeah. a dry sense of humour. He 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 got the humour of Starfleet and of the DS9 crew. He got all of them really well, but he took no shit at the same time. And yeah. he was a strong leader. He was he was the guy that hung out that, that, that was with like Admiral Ross and Cisco and stuff, wasn't he? There was another one. Mm-hmm. That was in charge of the he what he was he was a leader of the the Klingon Empire. And um, it wasn't Martok. It was the guy no, we missed. There was a no core. There was core. Um, Martok. Core. He said, "Go run, Gowron." Gowron. That's it. Gowron was the the chance the the chancellor. He was the high yeah. hegen. That was it. I didn't like him. He was a bit of a dick. Just not going to lie. <laughs> You know, I'm pulling out my forces in Deep Space Nine when they were relying on the Klingon forces, and Martok was pissed. Yeah, I remember that very much. So, um, there was uh, the Duras, the Duras sisters, um, and there's um, Star Trek. 7. I think what's uh, what's his name? Uh, well, it wasn't really an, an enemy, Christopher I guess, Plummer. But it was War's son was uh, Alexander, right? Alexander, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Kang Kang was the uh, was. Uh, uh, the guy you're talking about, as as, Christopher uh, Plummer, yeah, Gen- yeah. Gen- General. Oh, Chan, Gorkan. Chan, Gor- Gen- Gorkan. Ch- Gorkan, Gorkan. There's Gorkan. There's Chan. Who was the guy that? Who was the Pris- Christopher Plummer's character? Was that Gorkan or no? That, that was, was Chang. That was that Chang. Was Chang. Yeah. Gorkan Not was to be the... confused with Kang. G- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gorkan was the uh, was the ambassador that came on in Star Trek uh, yeah. Six, I believe. Yeah, Maybe yeah, I think, yeah, 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 I think so, correct, so correct. So, if, if you go way back, right, now, there's many things Star Trek have done right, and there's many things that mm-hmm. Star Trek's done wrong. Now, obviously, when we started in the 60s, the Klingons just looked like they'd fallen face forwards into the mud, and they had yeah. no ridges or nothing, right? In fact, the makeup for them back, even the 60s, I'm not slagging the 60s, but... I didn't like their makeup back in the 60s. And I'm not talking about prosthetics, and I know that yeah. wasn't a thing then. I just didn't like their makeup. It wasn't good enough, in my opinion. However, later on, Star Trek explains why they don't have the ridges and stuff. And, to be fair, credit where credit's due, Star Trek Enterprise is the one that actually talks about why they don't have the ridges back then, because there was a, a few years where there was a disease and the Klingon Empire, that's why they didn't have the ridges. And that was perfect. Really good episode, that, actually. Yeah. Um, and it was Archer himself that actually took the test vaccine. And you could see ridges are forming, forming on his head. I liked that. And then, obviously, after that section there, um, my mind just went, went absolutely blank there. What was I going to say? Yeah, and there was also the other series as well, Star Trek Discovery, who messed yeah. it up a little bit. But then they also bit. they messed it up a lot. <laughs> they did, but then what they tried to do was recover themselves a little bit. They had to. They were recovering many things, and one of them yeah. was Klingons look different at different times depending on what kind of mode they're on. I didn't buy that one as much. Great. Yeah. They were talking about you know some some are ready for war, and I think if they have war, they they either have long hair or they have short hair. I couldn't remember which it was, but. That was a bit far fetched, but it was them trying to fix their mistakes, mistakes that they made, so they had to the, fix the best, them. <laughs> the best explanation to me was the one that they said, "Look, on any planet, including here on Earth, you have different. Uh, I'm not going to say different species, but different types of, yeah, or different types of people. So we don't look like a Chinese person would. We don't look exactly like what maybe a, a, a I don't know. You can pick a couple different countries where you see the facial features are a little different or they're, or whatever. Yeah. So the same thing. So they were saying like, okay, well, you know, in different areas of the of their planet, they had other people that look a little different. True, true. You it's know. common sense, really, if you think about it. 
Yeah, I mean, so you don't. What do they all look alike? I mean, they don't all look alike here. So why would they all look alike on on for Klingon? So you know that makes sense. Yeah, great. But great. but the thing, but the thing with Discovery was just a little too much, though. I mean, if you're gonna sit there and have a different looking Klingon a little bit, I mean, wow, they just went like way over to I don't know what side they were doing. But it was it was dumb. They never should have bothered. It was stupid. True. You know, they could have made some changes, but not such a radical change. I mean, if you put the Klingon and Star Trek Discovery up against the Klingons of the past, I mean, they don't even come close, man. They look, they well, look really weird. If we're not even just talking about the looks, the Klingons of Star Trek Discovery were, in fort- I mean, it's everything about them, not just the looks. The, the, the big-ass ship they had. Now, it looked impressive. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. If this was outside canon and that we just just discovered this species for the first time and go wow the ship the uh, sophocus or whatever it was called that thing was huge it doesn't exist anywhere in canon apart from that and it was yeah. like it looked like it was bloody five times at least bigger than a d7 cruiser or something it was huge this thing oh my but they did fix that and i know gray they shouldn't have made those mistakes and not and then they they wouldn't have had to repair them otherwise but at least they did try to right. fix them and actually work in some logical canon as to why they look different uh but yeah no let's leave the, the disco side of things before we get upset i i note down here you know or actually you know down here actually when i'm talking about um are they good guys or are they bad guys? And you know, you you said here that there's always a fine line of tolerance between the two, right? Because they yeah. are they are they do skirt that border between good and bad. They really do uh, until they get it accepted. Uh, uh, actually, are they? They're never actual full fledged members of the Federation, I don't believe, but they're allies certainly at one point. Yeah, definitely allies. Yeah. yeah. So I it's mean, it's all bound by treaty. So you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for you, you, you definitely think that they're 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 neither. Is that would that be fair to say they're neither bad guy or good guy? They're just yeah, I guess. I mean, but I guess if you're gonna want an ally, hey, the Klingons aren't a bad ally. That's for sure. I think that's kind of what came to maybe came to pass when they made the uh, the treaty was they're sitting there going like, look, it's not it's it's mutually beneficial if we both, you know just promise not to like slaughter each other or whatever <laughs> true you know and get to, and get together for some common enemies and then some common enemies did pop up you know and stuff which we'll get into um yeah. so it all kind of kind of made sense i mean you always have the right the rogue people like oh there's a rogue klingon or a rogue what rogue whatever and that's okay you know yeah or you well, get them Ma- you get the maquis and stuff like that and you know which is just another whole different story that is a honorable mention obviously the maquis that's 24th century terrorism, te- possibly, yeah. technically. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, the, the, kind of finishing off on the Klingon side of things, um, mm-hmm. they came into their own during the Dominion War, for sure, I think. Yeah. They were proper allies of the Federation uh, at that time, and that's when you saw some of the best Klingon stuff, the, some of the best Klingon episodes, like I said before, General Martok's my favourite, because him, Worf, Ross and Cisco were just the, uh, the awesome foursome and right. they they all, all, almost single-handedly helped save the war at, at times um, some of my favourite episodes and I'm not going to uh, t- uh, rattle off title episodes because I'm not good at that uh, involve mm-hmm. Klingons uh, I'll give a little honourable mention to Blana Torres who is a cool character. She's very, very angry. She's got a lot more of the fire in her blood than Worf ever did, to be fair. Uh, Worf's a lot better at controlling it. But then when we saw right. Picard recently, how good was it to see him back? It was so, so good. And oh, he, obviously, he's obviously nice and silver looking, but he's matured. He's, he's very much like Spock when he got older. You know, he, he is still yeah. Worf, but he's mellowed and chilled, and then we we saw through the pass path. Pa- oh, he's a pacifist. We saw through that, didn't we? Great. They start. We're like, there's no way yeah. that's going to last for too long, uh, and we were right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you could, the most you could call it maybe is be like controlled uh, aggression. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he would turn it on and turn it off, but you couldn't just sit there and go like, I'm a pacifist, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're like, no chance. It's not happening. And none of his friends were believing it either. You remember when Frakes just goes like, we're all dead. 
<laughs> what old dad? Yeah, I remember that. That. That, that said it right there. That was great. It's like, we're all dead now. <laughs> that kind of shit. Uh, it was really good to see him back. How much would you would you would you want to see a, a Captain Worf or a Worf series limited edition series? Yeah. I mean, this goes back to what you and I have always talked about, and many fans too. I would almost rather see not bother making any series and just make mini Specials, series. Yeah. Six yeah, wouldn't it be cool to see it? Yeah, so maybe a TV movie, or maybe maybe like a, a three episode mini series, and you would have Captain Worf, or you know Captain Sulu, or or some of these other things that we've always wanted to see. It yeah. would be a one and done. You do three, you know, you do a thing. It's one, it's done. Yeah, I mean, it would, it, it, I think they would get many many fans to to really love that, but they just they don't go with that. They just they're they're too they're still too stuck in the we have to have it this way. And Gray, and Gray, yeah. let's let's not forget if we had a limited edition Cisco series, right? We'd finally find out what the hell he done to the Enterprise and pay that off. <laughs> because it is I don't know if it's a canon thing or it's beta canon like they have in the books, but he was captain of the Enterprise at one point. And I'd sure. love e, to right. see on the E what he because he is a captain in Picard season three, but he's like uh he's like um Frakes his character as well. He he is not acting captain at the time. He's just a captain right. of that starship, which I didn't know was a thing actually until that came around. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. so that was cool. I would love to see that. Uh, the last thing I'm going to ask you on the Klingons, great, is does anyone hate the Klingons more than James T. Kirk? Nah, I don't <laughs> think so. And, and we haven't heard anything or seen anybody, as far as I know. I mean. And I think that's that's wise because when they did Star Trek Six and they, when they first started to form the treaty with the Klingons, it was important to have Kirk won over, um, and yeah. it took some time because he wanted them all dead. Remember, he said, "I said oh, they yeah. said, well, he said, let them die." That was a powerful line in that movie, by the way. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't expecting Dark. that at all. I was gonna, yeah, and he came like, "Oh, what? Did he just say that? What? You know." That's but, why those movies are great because they they stretch things a little bit, and then to see him come full circle and realize, maybe it was somewhat reluctantly, but realize that this was something that was needed, he did what he had to do, you know, and stuff. I don't think he hates some like obviously before he passes away. I don't think he hates some anymore at that stage, but I wouldn't say he loves them either. He he got to the stage where oh, he accepted yeah. them for who they were. He probably he won't be able to forgive them for the death of his son. Spoiler, Personal. I apologise if you didn't know that. If you didn't know that and you're watching this channel, then what are you all about? Um, yeah, but... I was like, long ago. This <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I think he's mellowed and chilled in that one, to be fair. Um, mm-hmm. But that was some dark stuff from, from uh, Kurt yeah. back in the day with the Klingons. Um, right, move on to the Klingons, because this one is... I don't know why I put I added this one on just because there's many tiers to it and and you'll see yeah. that by the additional notes that and, and bullet points that Gray put down and added on to mine as well, and that is the Dominion, uh, right. Stroke Founders because the founders were the the high hegens of it, uh, and that was obviously made up of the Changelings headed led by the founders, the uh, Cardassians. Uh, the Gem Hadar, and obviously you've got the Vorta in there as well, the clones. So there's many elements to this, and it was a big complex yeah. machine that seemed to really work. And the, and obviously the Breen came into it later on, and um, they were a strong, strong outfit. And that's why they thought when they came together, they take over the Alpha Quadrant really easily, because there was all these different factions at war with each other. And mm. you see, you see that happen in real life just now. To be fair, um, so I wonder what they drew their yeah. inspiration. But when they come together, they think it's going to be easy. But then they don't, they, they don't factor the the Klingons and the Federation coming to work together. And no one's seen that. I didn't see that coming when yeah. that happened. I was like, wow, okay. And obviously the Romulans and whatnot, and come into it later on as well. What's mm. your opinion on them, Gray? I, I, where are they in the rankings for you? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Um, I think the Minion is way up there, mainly because they needed something, uh, especially with Deep Space Nine, to have as as an enemy. And the cool thing was is that instead of just making an enemy, they made a multitude of enemies by having a hierarchy system. So you had the Dominion, you know, the founders, and then 
they in turn created the Vorta. They genetically engineered them. They in turn created the Gem Hadar, which is also genetically engineered by them. Yeah. And then the Cardassians kind of fell in line with that and the Breen and others and stuff. And it just made it like, wow, this is like, we're not just fighting now against one entity. We're fighting against a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and so that, that brought a, a true, uh, you know, thing of war going on and stuff. And it became very broad. And that's when the Klingons, when they were already allies, made total sense because it said, you know, you had to get together, you know, the enemy of my enemy is, is you know, my, my friend kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, thing. and and all that stuff made <laughs> sense. And so it gave a lot of great storylines and stuff. It uh, really did. Some of DS9's best and, episodes. Oh, yeah. And they, and they treated it properly all the way through the years that they did it. And they wrapped it up properly, you know, at the end and stuff. So... We had a lot of fun with that. I mean, you could almost say in some ways that Dominion was maybe even the best Star Trek enemy they had, mainly because instead of having, you know, like a one-off kind of villain thing, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not going to say that, you know, we're going to get onto the board, but it's not, it's not that I'm trying to say they're better than anybody. It's not that really that. It's just that the Dominion had so many facets to it that you could just write all kinds of stories. Yeah. You know, and stuff. Yeah. I mean, and because you had so much to, so much so we're more complex. material, yeah. yeah, and that really was great, and that really made Deep Space Nine, uh, you know, a step up on the series. And even people that thought that they, you know, didn't like Deep Space Nine that much, have now had gotten back to Deep Space Nine, and now there's more Deep Space Nine fans than ever. Yeah, it's true. People have, have gotten back to it and went like, oh, yeah, that, maybe that wasn't such a bad series after all. I agree. We can't we can't forget that. Um... And obviously, in, in Picard season three, they brought a little bit of that element back yeah. with some of the changelings, because not all the changelings mm-hmm. from the Dominion um, absolutely perished or or went their separate ways right. and took this. I mean, it's like any war, right? So when World War Two ended, for example, do you think all the Nazis all went away and go, yeah, no problem, that's fine. Some of them were loyalists still and a small minority and sure. were still fighting the good fight in their in their eyes, you know. So. It's the same here. The the changelings, a rogue bunch of changelings, did actually join up uh, with I've forgotten her name, Amanda Plummer's. The I've forgotten her name, um, and joined their alliance and, and joined with the Borg and whatnot, yeah. and that made a strong alliance in its own respect. So I liked that they used elements like that again. Again, you you have to use it well. Gray and I are not fans of you rinse and repeat constantly and absolutely rip the arse out of it so that you're fed up of, yeah, time travel. We've done that all the time. You have used these bad guys. I think we've agreed as well that don't use the Borg for a long, long time again, please. You've literally taken it to the limit of Mm -hmm. it being repetitive now. So they brought this element back, thought it was really, really cool. Gray, do you think, would would you say that the Dominion are probably the the best or the strongest bad guy alliance that's existed in, in Star Trek. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, it was pretty much the only bad guy alliance, uh, more or less. Yeah, I mean, until sure. until until sure. Picard season three, there was there was somewhat of an alliance thing going yeah, on there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but that was because the Dominion laid the found, you know the groundwork for a lot of that, and Terry smartly saw that and was able to involve those some of those elements. Terry. <laughs> yeah. Or God, Terry Metallus. So, but overall, I think, yeah, I mean, there's just it's so much was it was so much more intricate. Yeah, you didn't know exactly what was you didn't even know there were the founders were changelings until later. Yeah, that was genius. Was, Make them mysterious. You just kept on, yeah. yeah. And it and of course that reflected on Odo being the only changeling that was raised in Starfleet, so to speak. Wharf um, again, it's Wharf and, again, isn't it? Right, all over again. Yeah. The only exactly. one that's in Starfleet. Love it. Yep. I love it. So it 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 really gave so many different things to, to so many different angles to, to cover and stuff. And it also made the Cardassians more interesting too, because some of the Cardassians, even though they're involved with dominion, some were not all that fond of the dominion, you know, too. So there was some conflict going on there. I mean, there's yeah. you really go back to a lot of those episodes and if people haven't really watched deep space nine that are listening to us, you should go back and watch at the very least start when Worf came in, which was season four, I think. That's when it um, got really good in my eyes, just my opinion. Right. I mean, I would watch them all, but the point stuff. is, if you're not going to watch them all, start there and then watch because there are some really, really, really good episodes. And there was yeah. stuff that, that 
that Cisco did that was uncharacteristic for captains that we've well, known. Well, in getting Star the Romulans Trek. into the war. That's one of my favorite DS9 episodes of all time. Brilliant. Oh, sure. And he, and he did other things that were unexpected. Like, you're like, what? Oh, that's yeah, sounds, yeah. you know. So it was, they, they, they really were able to spread themselves, you know, into in some interesting storylines, I, I think. And so it really, really was good. You have to sometimes, and, Gray, think about why bad guys do what they do, right? They've all got the reasons, right? And sometimes you sympathize with them. Sometimes mm-hmm. you don't, right? There's always a reason they do these things, for the most part, unless you've got one single dictator. Um, sure. But if you think back to why, let's say, the Dominion part, the changelings, the, found, the founders, done what they've done, mm-hmm. I kind of understood it a bit. They're obviously in the beta quadrant. They, this wormhole opens up thanks to God's. And yeah. all of a sudden, they're getting more and more visits to their quiet little Great Link that they were just chilling out and having martinis and cocktails by the Great Link, right? They're chilling, doing their thing, right. and then all of a sudden, more solids, as they call them, start swinging by. Solids, yeah. Yeah, and, and whether maybe they're doing inappropriate things, maybe they're just flying by not doing anything. Who knows? But they've obviously got a concern. They're like, who are these solids? What is going on here? They're obviously an intelligent species, the, the Great Link. They know what's going on. But they see them as a threat. So they start doing something about it. So I, I, I understand why they do it. But then they realize, wait a minute, we can't fight this war on our own. We need right. all these different elements. And obviously we've got, we've got the Vorter that we mentioned, right? They were the the generals of the of the the, the dominion that, that that ran everything they were cloned jeffrey coombs star trek royalty played so many great characters he was a great vorta i loved him in that yeah um great 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 character uh he obviously had the gem hadar who were uh the stormtroopers if you like that's the best equivalent they are they right. were the and they're pretty they're pretty good they're nasty they were yeah they were the they were Actually, I compare them to the, the stormtroopers. That's an insult to the Jem Hadar. They pissed up. They would piss all over the the, the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers for me were always <laughs> about yeah. mindless automatons, and they got easily wiped out. The Jem Hadar are proper. Think about some of our finest soldiers today. The na- the, the 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 Navy SEALs, the SAS. They're 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 that right. kind of quality. Very very good at what they do, but they're obviously controlled by a drug because they were they were all test tubes apparently they were all test tube uh, right. science experiments so uh, and then obviously the Cadassians came in there Cadassians was the smart part because they they realized that they actually had to have a proper ally uh in the alpha quadrant that they could rely on because at the start they were mm-hmm. taking everything through the wormhole weren't they so they needed the base, base of operations they allied with the Cardassians who they saw wanted to do more with themselves they wanted a power grab sure. Um, and the Cardassians are a great species, to be fair. Um, and then, obviously, after that, we have the Breen coming in. Now, the Breen was genius because, you know, Starfleet was, you know, taking a bit of a pounding before then, but they were holding their own. Mm. And obviously, my little, my, my baby comes in, is absolutely ripping up a new one, the Defiant. And then that's when the Breen come in with their superior technology that absolutely starts destroying and wrecking uh, starships by draining energy from from the whole ship. I was very very see, see when they destroyed the the Defiant. Again, spoiler alert. When they destroyed the Defiant, <laughs> when the Breen came in, my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, this is like a TV. This is brilliant, but I'm really sad at the same time. Um, I'm glad it came back uh, later on, but it was just a perfect combination. Great. What what part of like was there like a subspecies or a part of the dominion you like liked more than the rest of them, or did you just love the whole thing? Um, I mean, obviously the I think the, the top four you liked uh, the founders Vorta, Jemadar, Cardassian. Breens were cool for what they were, uh, although they were there only so for the brief time. A little bit, yeah. Um, some of the other ones you either forget or you, or you you just they just kind of mention it so that you know that there was multiple species involved. Um, but I liked all all of them. I think they all made sense. They all had their p- part to play. You know, I mean, the Vorta were like the uh, the, the con men. <laughs> of the, uh, uh, you know, they used to sit there and talk. Well, you know, we do this and we do that, and because of this and because of that, and they're all like, okay, 
yeah, yeah. I, I was a fan of them. I was a fan of them. To be fair, you've written you've written many other things under the Cadassians. Were they they're not linked, are they? I don't think. No, they no, are. no. I was just, I, I was just mentioning that the Cardassians. Remember, they were the they were the bad guys before the founders came around. Uh, yeah, because in sure. the early seasons of uh, of Deep Space Nine, they're they're the they're the bad. Um, when the founders came around, it just made it that much more. Because now the the Cardassians go into the founders fold, and now it's like, oh crap! Now it's a lot more than just the Cardassians. But but you, and of course the, the Bajorans weren't happy about that, obviously. Uh, not, uh, the reason I was getting confused is because you linked them in with the Cardassians, like the Sona, the. No, that was just that, were, that was just all the other ones that they kind of mentioned. Ah, uh, right. Being okay. part of the founders, really? You the know? Sona were part of the yeah. founders. See, this is yeah. this is. I didn't know this part. That I'm, I apologize. I'm confused about that part. I, I didn't. didn't I didn't know some of these, and I even forgot some of these as far as the names go. But all these species are supposed to be wow together with the founders or allied with the founders. Tell us who they are, Gray. Then, you think I can pronounce this? Uh, well, you wrote son- it, so you're pronouncing Sana it. Sona <laughs> hunters. The Sona. The, uh, the, so- the Sona are from Sona. Star Star Trek uh, Insurrection. They're the ones that wanted okay. to be constantly younger. That's why I'm surprised they were part of the Dominion or the Cadassians, whatever. That confused mm. me. But, hunters, uh, Gria, uh, Karenma, 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 and Dosa, whatever. The Dosa, the Dosa. Dosa. And the T. Rogerins. That's like T. Rex. Like T. Rogerins. <laughs> I didn't know this. Listen, like, honestly, this. Wow. The Sona. There might even be others, but that's the ones that I that I was able to find out, you know. And I just kind of, oh, yeah. And you know, I start, some of them I recognize, some of them I'm like, which ones were they? <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, that is, that's the Dominion side of things. They were obviously a big thing that we had to cover. It goes without mm-hmm. saying. Our last. Uh, bad guy if you want before we got at the end we'll go on to some quick honorable mentions because um uh there's there's too many to actually mention here we'd have like mm. hours long podcasts and we don't want to do that um the last major bad guy that we wanted to cover was obviously the borg um a sure. few things i've noted down here we'll obviously spend a bit of time talking about these guys i've mentioned that surely they've got to be the ultimate bad guys of star trek and Gray, no, no. Gray agrees. Well, we're very similar sure. to our Star Trek wants and, and dislikes, um, and we did touch on this before, Gray, that they have mm-hmm. been done done to death, but hopefully they don't do them for a long while, and we appreciate them a, a bit more. Uh, when I saw them in Star Trek: Picard season three, I loved it, even though I'd seen them in season yeah. one and two in different aspects because it was the OG Borg. So. Right, right. Uh, OG Borg and uh, Hippie Borg, Gray. I take it there's only one winner. And when I say Hippie Borg, that's Jurati when she went off and became kind of passive aggressive Borg and there were own little subspecies thing. Um, yeah, I assume it's OG um, Borg for you, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't like all the, the offshoot with, with her, with Jacardi or whatever, because I hated her character anyway. So to make her this, <laughs> the new Borg queen, I'm, I'm sitting there just going, no, come on. No, I don't you gotta do be, it. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> it's just was... like, it's just, but that was many things that went wrong with Picard season one and two and stuff. Thank God they were able to pull off a three. Well, um, they, they done them in every season. If you think about it, they done them in every season and that was far too much. Like season one, yeah. they were in it, but not to the degree of two and three. Obviously you got the artifact as they called it. The Romulus looking, looking after that Cuban salvage in it. And yeah, that made sense. That was fine. And then obviously seven and nine came back in, and mm-hmm. she starts taking control of the the cube. Now that was an OG cube, that was the OG right. Borg, although you don't see much of them. Um, and I did like that kind of grey because I obviously love seven and nine in many ways. And she comes back and actually temporarily becomes the Borg queen and takes control of that ship. And she actually takes it into the fight later on uh, until she loses all her drones. Which I absolutely loved. Seeing that part was yeah. just like, yeah, give me some of that. But it got a bit silly as well with the 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 bad Romulan guy. I can't remember the brother, the the, the English yeah. actor that played him. Um, that got a bit silly yeah. with the the I've forgotten their name, the Jet Fash or something. Yeah, the the the, the offshoot of the Tal Shiar. Well, we you're talking about remember? the season two of Picard, right? We forget everything. One and two. That. One and two. One and two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we forget that too. <laughs> uh, no, the 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 
was that fascia whatever they're called they were um yeah, yeah they were in season yeah. one they were in season one were they not yeah because that was yeah. the whole the like, ai thing taking over uh so it got a bit silly and they kind of ruined it a bit for me but then obviously we had season yeah. two which was ridiculous that i never got that was the borg from a different timeline basically that came like to it's our a new timeline. depths of low oh, just <laughs> it's I mean, already low they just went lower don't get me wrong don't get me wrong great that it could have made sense so that's mm-hmm. obviously borg from a different timeline that came through forward to our timeline right but if right. they'd done the whole story where the borg queen tries to assimilate someone in terms of not the way they done it in season two made sense for me like jurati mm-hmm. let's you know you know that you as a bar queen you're almost powerless you don't have your 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 uh, hive there with you so you're just one person you have to almost be a bit sneaky and devilish in how you actually assimilate this person and she almost uses psychology to do it to the point where jurati almost surrenders and she assimilates her, but it's just the offshoot, this little hippie species that I absolutely couldn't stand. <laughs> hippie species. And the, sh- the ship they had at the end was powerful, but yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's, it's not it's not nice. So, no. It's, it, it, oh, it's funny when you when when you say hippie Borg, I'm sitting there thinking of a Borg just all of a sudden going, hey, man, like, what's <laughs> up? <laughs> well, they were hey, a bit look. passive aggressive, so they were a bit more chilled, actually. Listen, we just... We just want you to know we're going to simulate you. Dude. It's kind of futile. I mean, you know, <laughs> that would have been great. I'm sitting going like, what? <laughs> yeah, you only ever see Jurati, though, so we don't know what the rest of them are like. They could have been like that for all we know. God. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's obviously the I mean, you think board. about it. Take take Jurati from season two, which is bad enough, and then put her up against the queen from season three. There's no contest. I mean, we don't want to see Jurati. Get out of here. It's like, oh, know. the queen from... That that was yeah. that's that's a good point you brought up, Greg. Because when we saw the Borg in season three, we thought, "Wait a minute, what are we seeing here? Is this the OG Borg or not?" Because the last we saw them right. properly was uh, Voyager Endgame, the the this, the finale, and that mm-hmm. was uh, Future Janeway absolutely wrecking them with a pathogen, right? And we thought right. they're done. There's nothing left. But th- thankfully, there was. There was the remnants. That was that same Borg Queen played by a different yeah. actress because I think that other actress passed away sadly um, and they actually uh, you could see when you saw the Borg Queen she was bashed up something chronic they'd done that really yeah. well Grey the fact that there was barely anything left it was one cube left mm-hmm. it was a queen who was absolutely smashed to bits she looked she yeah. looked bad um, and she was cannibalizing what was left of her or drones to actually crew, yeah. survive. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I never yeah. really thought, like, you know, they would do that. In a sense, they're not really supposed to do that. But you know, this is a whole different angle. It was. So when she was cannibalizing them and they're just dying, and she so she could stay alive, I'm like, like, wow, it's kind of, kind of yeah. interesting, <laughs> brutal. And the thing about that cube yeah. that they had, great, right? I didn't know this until I watched some more of these clips and snippets you have after the, the episode came out that. The cube, it was a mega cube actually. It was bigger than a normal cube, which I didn't appreciate because when you see the Enterprise D, again, sorry guys, spoiler alert, you know the D came back, kind of. Right. When you see the D up against the ship, it looks tiny, but when you see the D up against a normal cube, it looks tiny as well. So comparisons were really hard, but apparently, no, great, that was a mega cube. It was way bigger mm. than a normal cube, and that was its last stance. You saw it in the uh, red spot of Jupiter with its massive antenna sticking out and I just and then Enterprise D with the the awesome Beverly Crusher comes along and absolutely wrecks it bit far fetched but I didn't care that was one time you could just I don't care what you do right now I've I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just sitting here watching it like this right it's like let oh, it rip yeah don't, don't, just keep going <laughs> keep going and then everyone turns around and looks like Crusher like it's been a long 25 <laughs> yeah. years guys <laughs> I was, that, was one of the best, that was one of the best one-liners. Like we always say, you can write, you write the proper line, you can get away with a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and even if anybody was even thinking, like, wait a minute, wasn't she a doctor? And then when she says that, it's like, oh, okay. A uh, lot's happened like, in 25 years. It yeah, it sure it has. It and it, the one-liners kept going, obviously, with the... Uh, and obviously, we know what happened to Enterprise E, and everyone turns around and looks at Worf. Yeah, Worf, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not not my my fault. fault. Please, let's find out what he done to the Enterprise E. 
So oh yeah. Oh my god, I want a movie so badly now that I just you got to have a movie to bring in all that stuff. <laughs> I would, you know, I would just... a TV movie because they're going to do a TV movie yeah. every two years, so that could be one of them. Um, yeah, well, I wish. I think they should do forget series totally and just do t- just do the TV movies or very short mini series. That's it. Don't do anything else. I'd be happy because if you, done you, that great. you could do so many different things. Then you're you're free to do anything. You could do a DS nine ish kind of thing, a Voyager kind of thing, a, whatever. That you're like totally nice. open because yeah. you have no you're not you're not stuck to going like well you know we have to do like you know two or three or four or five years of this no you don't just sure. do these things and you just could have so much going on I mean it would, it would be great Gray I have to I have to ask you this one here because I'm curious on your opinion the uh, the the kind of main trope of season three of Picard was obviously we're assimilating them on a biological kind of level rather than using mm-hmm. the technology and the nanoprobes from before, see that whole method of under a certain age and we could implement something into you. Did you agree with that or did you did you think that was a silly idea? Did that work? Um I thought I kinda it worked for me. I'm I'm not gonna say it, it didn't have maybe or you didn't feel like maybe there was some stretching going on, but I, but overall I don't I didn't think I didn't think it was bad at all. It gave a good explanation of how some of this was pulled off. Yeah. So, you know, and made it more uh, ominous, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the thing that the thing I liked about Terry in the series is that he, generally speaking, had an answer for everything he he propositioned. So, in other words, when we were watching the show and we were doing the reviews, right? You and I were always saying, oh, "I don't know. He's got to get himself out of this one. I hope he does." And then they do it. They would. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. we'd watch another episode and go like, "Oh, I don't know. How are they going to get them?" And they and they did. And that's how that's good writing. If it makes you and I sit there and go like, "Well, how are they going to get out of this one?" and then they do it, then you're like, you can look back and go like, "Damn, that was some good writing." Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. True. True. I mean, I I I liked it for the most part. The one thing I didn't like was it only worked up into a certain age group, which I I'm mm-hmm. sorry I called BS and that. I'm just like, what? That that's obviously convenient. You can't assimilate everyone; otherwise, it won't work. However. Right. You could have maybe tweaked that a little bit to make it a little bit more sensical, because uh, I mm, wasn't buying yeah. what they were selling. You, you know, you could have had everyone that was on one particular ship safe for whatever reason, or they were quarantined in a certain place and they were fine. You know, that, there's easier things around it, but doing it on a biological level was cool. I like to see that element. Yeah. I like to see the fact that they were using um, Picard and, and 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 Crusher's son. That was cool. We we mm. knew that a mile away that that was going to be the, the kid we just yeah. saw it with the same kind of similar accent it was obvious um yeah. so yeah no uh, the og borg are the ultimate bad guys because we've seen them quite a few times some of my favorite episodes and movie of star trek of all time have been because of the borg for the longest time gray i could never make up my mind which was my favorite star trek movie so i always had to separate it into two i would say my favourite movie of the OG crew would be two, Rafa Khan, hands down. And sure. then my favourite movie of the, T- uh, the, 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 the TNG era was always going to be First Contact because that is a fantastic movie. Everything about it is phenomenal. Um, and I could never choose. And I thought to myself, why should I have to choose? I come yeah. from a different era than you for Star Trek, so that's what mm-hmm. I'm used to. But I appreciate the TOS stuff as well. But now I obviously have edged towards more Rafa Khan because, well, it's just bloody amazing. And I saw it on the big screen a number of months ago, um, which was fantastic. But some yeah. episodes were fantastic as well. Great. Endgame. Sure. I remember seeing Endgame um, a couple of weeks before it came out in the UK because this was back then before streaming and internet right. was still a bit crap. And I went to a convention. I got to see it. Two weeks before it was released in the UK, and I was, I was, the jaw was on the floor because I'm watching it with hundreds of other Star Trek fans. You know, sure. that's you, you're well, with it's your always people. More fun. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're with your people, mate. Um, and there was big cheers and whatever going on. It was that was phenomenal. Um, yeah. Some that's another reason Voyager is my favorite series because it has the Borg in it the most. That's another yeah. element for me. Do you have any favorite notable notable uh, episodes or, oh, or story man. arcs oh. with a Borg that you love, Greg? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, 
except for what they did to the Borg in the Picard season one and two. Every time they got involved was something interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you knew you were going to be in for something like, ooh, the Borg, ooh, what do we do now? Yeah. You know, so I don't know if I can really pick a favorite. It was just kind of like they showed up and it was instantly like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's been very few bad episodes with the Borg. Usually when you got a couple of episodes about, there was one day, uh, the Voyager episode where there was like an offshoot that used to be part of the clip. It was uh, Chakotay was involved in that one when he woke up and it was the mm. lady that looked all pretty and stuff, but that's not how she really looked like. And they were an offshoot. They were disconnected from the hive and they had to try and reconnect to they were using Chakotay. Things mm-hmm. like that, little offshoots. I wasn't a, a fan of that, but it, it was always usually fantastic. Well, there's and, always, and, there was the uh, uh, the storyline about Hugh that started in uh, yeah. TNG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know when that came out, some people were kind of like... Uh, and he was in Picard season one, he came back, which I, I really yeah, love to see. Yeah, which I'd like to see the character back, but what they did with him, I didn't like. Really? Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. It just seemed out of place because, and, and to be honest with you, everybody was looking for the, the their OG Borg. <laughs> that they, they didn't want to see Hugh. You know, it's like, oh, no, no, that's, that's okay. Get to the real mean guys now. <laughs> he was part of the OG Borg back in the day, though. When he was, yeah, but then once he... Came his own self, like it. seven or nine. He came out of it, and he was his own right. individual, you know. But he went back, so he went back to try to change the board, which he probably did in some areas. You know, that's when they had to start explaining that that even though the Borg's a Borg, there were some spinoffs, like they want to call it that. <laughs> um, you know that, and in which technically, I guess you you say now nah, there couldn't be, but they had to come up with something to show there yeah. was like a faction or something that split off or did or became reprogrammed or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, essentially, that's what it was in, in Star Trek season, uh, Picard season three, really. Yeah. I mean, that side of the Borg was a bit of an offshoot or, or, or whatever. And the it Queen was. had essentially reprogrammed and cannibalizing them. I mean, you know. <laughs> Pretty so it was right there. And, of course, the Borg you know, was... The, other thing, the, the, the one yeah. thing I was... I don't know why I went back on this one, but remember when you, we were talking about uh, Picard's son? And uh, you had mentioned, like, you know, well, you know, it kind of looks like him and had the accent. But the first thing I thought about after that was going, like, you, you, you don't uh, inherit an accent. So if you think about it. They explained it made, that, though. Yeah, I know. But it made sense on, on in, this, in the show. Of course it did. But technically, eh, that would be a stretch. <laughs> like, no, no, you, you don't inherit it. But they did explain that. He, he went to school for a long time in London. So that's why he's he's got the accent. Yeah, uh, like, but but they gave him that. Okay. They chose a, a, an actor with an English accent on purpose. Sure. They could sure. have picked an American actor and went, oh, he he grew up with other people that spoke with an American accent, hence why he's got an American accent. But yeah, your you, point. Actually, what would what would have been funny is if his son spoke French. <laughs> well, <laughs> Bobby Picard barely spoke uh, no, it. No, so. it, it would it be funny if Jean Ironic. Picard speaks English? All of a sudden, his son was like raised in France, and he comes around speaking French. <laughs> or you could French make accent. it up. You could, you could, you could make <laughs> it up. Obviously, you had a a, a theater actor, proper old mm-hmm. school English theater actor, who then transitions to Hollywood, and all the glitz and glamour, but it's not the same prestige as theater. Um, right. and, and and plays a character from a science fiction show that's bald, mm-hmm. that 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 is playing a French character even though he's English. It's just it, it should yeah. never work, but it, it obviously very much did so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I remember it, way way back when when he point. took over or Patrick Stewart took the role. They were all going like, well, I don't think a bald person can really you know make it. On it. They put Who a toupee on him as well, and it looked ridiculous. Well, look at look at Cisco. He went from a lot of hair to less hair to bald by the time the True. series was into it. I mean, True. He was his best when he was bald and a captain. Just yeah. So. Um, yeah. And obviously, the last thing to mention of Borg is they always had the coolest technology because they assimilated everything. I was always in True. of transwarp and all that good stuff until future Janeway came along with... That's the bit I loved and hated with shielding, which could take a pounding, but a torpedo mm-hmm. that could take out one cube with one one go. That was a bit ridiculous because we don't. Yeah. Where's that technology to this day? In Endgame, they yeah, took exactly. Voyager back and dismantled it. You never see it again. That is something yeah. they need to explain. Maybe they say they have to destroy it because of the timeline or something. I wonder, although I, I I doubt it. You know, will they will they have any explanation of that when we see uh, Prodigy season two? 
I would like to. Maybe, maybe the maybe the the Voyager B's uh, A's got it, but you never see it in later on in the future in Star Trek and Discovery. So yeah, oh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, now they had they had they would bet they would have been better off bringing that into Discovery instead of the stupid spore drive. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you think about it, because it was already there True. and it had become canon. So you know, you had to come up with a spore drive run by mushrooms and stuff. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean come on. <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll wrap up the Borg there, right, because we could obviously talk sure. ages and ages and ages. Just like in a, maybe 10 minutes or so, talking about some of the other noticeable mm-hmm. bad guys we've got in Star Trek. I'll run through some of the the, 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 the list that we've got at the moment, then we can maybe touch on some of them. Sure. So we've got the Romulans, of course, right? Uh, we've got the Crystalline Entity. Uh, we had the Doomsday Machine down as well, which I absolutely loved. Lore, Data's... Bad mm-hmm. guy, uh, uh, brother, bad guy, android, uh, Q, who we'll, we'll, we'll touch on him because he's, he's uh, I don't know if he's good or bad, but both. And Maki, of course, we touched on them. Mm-hmm. And Khan as well, um, who was. Wait, wait you what? mean Khan? Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. <laughs> how, how could I forget? Great, does a good impression. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll touch on, obviously, we'll touch on something. So Q, the first one. I. Gray noted this down. I was a bit surprised because I never seen him as a bad guy, and he kind of proved that later on in Picard season two, where mm-hmm. one of the few good bits of that season was the scenes with him and Picard at the end, uh, Delancey yeah. and Stuart at the end was very emotional because he was supposed yeah. to be dying, and he obviously that was pops the only up later thing on. Was... That pissed yeah. me off. That by the way, but he was dying, and there was an emotional scene there. And you, you, you were like, he, I done us a reason. I was testing you. I knew that if I tested you, you would would see your best self. You're the you kind of leader. We're all looking for that kind of thing. Um, but why do you think he's a bad guy? Just because he skirts in that line, Gray, that he's a bit mischievous. Well, I mean, I he's not exactly a good guy either. I think he basically <laughs> he's he kind of straddles the line. Uh, first of all, he's the one that brought the Borg in. Everybody kind true, of gets that. True, 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 true. So oh, if yeah. he didn't bring the Borg in, it may not have been. We'd still discover the Borg eventually, but he brought it up to front. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so if you really want to be technical about it, he brought the Borg in, and the Borg wiped out a whole bunch of Starfleet people. So uh, I wouldn't look at Q as being such a great guy in that respect. Mm. Um, it, again, they, since because he was an all-knowing, practically immortal entity, it, it, he got away with certain stuff. And he tested the crew and essentially didn't kill them or anything. And yeah, okay, you know, it's kind of interesting. And it, and it made for some great stories and stuff. But you can't flat out say he was a good guy either, you know, and stuff. It was just so you have to kind of throw him in under there the There is a term part. for that if you're not a good guy or a bad guy. I've forgotten. I've forgotten that he's, he's mixed up, confused. <laughs> uh, Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, your points, your, your points are valid. He was uh, he was definitely he's a bit like the Klingons in that in that respect. He skirted mm-hmm. that line a lot of the time, good and bad. He done good things, he done bad things. He always had a reason for doing it, whether you liked it or not. And obviously, when we thought he was dying, that was the perfect way to send him off. We obviously see him in that teaser for a, a possible Star Trek Legacy show where he pops up um, to see Crusher Junior. Um, and and I didn't like that, but then that could be explained by it's a younger version of himself, time travel, whatever. Uh, yeah. But he was John Delancey was brilliant, and obviously when we saw him come back in Picard, we we're like, how's the agent thing going to work? And again, your 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 uh, well, obviously it wasn't Terminalis at the time, but they, they they made that smart by just wanting to age up so he looked more like Patrick Stewart and the rest of them so that, it, you know, it made sense. It, it, he didn't want him to feel bad, bless him. Um, and he played him brilliantly. And when you speak to, when you huh? see interviews of John Delancey and coming back to the role, it was just so sweet to see. He hasn't lost anything. He is a fine actor, Delancey. Sure. And I love to I, see To him. be honest, if it was if it was me, I wouldn't have brought him back at the end of Picard season three. I, don't I wouldn't have no. really... let him at the scenes where he was dying. That's it. Exactly. He died. He's gone. That's it. It was a great send off, and then all of a sudden he's back, and it's like, like, well, you know, my my death is. is uh, uh, and they don't explain my... why, Gray. Like the Enterprise. No, well, of course thing, not. It's yeah. just you, you can't leave answers like that, you know, or questions. Yeah. And, 
Someone if you were like going to do something like that, then bring back, and I wouldn't do this either, but I'm saying bring back somebody somebody else from the Q continuum, maybe. Yeah, a different yeah. character, why not? Um, but yeah. certainly, certainly, like, just as a noticeable mention, of course, a quick noticeable mention for uh, Khan. Khan, as Gray would say. Yeah. He, that, you don't need to spend much time in this one because everyone knows about him. Like, he was one of the most singular best bad guys that ever existed from not only back in the TOS series, which I would recommend uh, someone, you, you go back and watch that first of all, because that was phenomenal. Basically, there you that go. The name of um, and then later on, obviously, in Star Trek 2, he came back. Roberto Montalban, I think his name was. Ricardo Montalban. Ricardo yeah. Montalban, apologies. Um, mm -hmm. He was fantastic. Uh, sadly, no longer with us, uh, but he played the best bad guy role I've ever seen in any Star Trek movie or series and that was in Star Trek 2 or after Khan. Fantastic. Yep. Um would you say he's the best singular bad guy in all of Star Trek? I, do. Or, I yeah? think so. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. There's no doubt. I mean there's some good ones, but he stands out above everything. Not only in the original series, but even more so in the in the movie. Yeah. So yeah. And just, they try to I mean I haven't seen anybody beat his performances yeah. yet. And I, they tried part of that to is because him, didn't they? Oh yeah, I mean, oh please, don't even mention that when they try to put him in the the uh, Kelvin timeline, which that, I, I that, wanna, that is I not a sly, that, that is not a sly in uh, uh, Benedict Cumberpatch, who's a fine no, actor. No. He done a good job, but you're never going to beat that performance. No, you know, no, it, it was stupid, and I I hate everything with the Kelvin line. Just like Same. go away, Same. <laughs> go away <laughs> under know. under the rug, away with you. <laughs> um, we, we had mentioned the Romulans too, and I just wanted to yeah. say that, yeah, that you know, some people are going to go like, "Well, you know, the Romulans are." One of the oldest because they popped up first and la la la. Are they older than and the Klingons it's... actually? They maybe came in before mm. the Klingons. Can't remember. What is it? One right. of the two. I, I, I think the Romulans were one of the first. They popped up very early. But the point is, they're one of the originals. Yeah. I guess one of the original bad guys. But the only thing with the Romulans is is that their history of being in Trek was always cool, but they weren't in it very much. Whereas the Klingons were in it a lot more. A lot, and that's lot because more. only because the people really like the Klingons, and it just became popular, so they did more of it. It's got its own you know, as well, of course. Right, so. and the, but the Romans were cool. They had they, they got some really great-looking ships. They they definitely are not, not nice people. <laughs> you know, and we find out later how they explain the whole thing of why the Romans have pointed ears and the Vulcans have pointed ears, then you find out it's an offshoot of, of Vulcans that went off and evolved on their own. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're definitely worth mentioning because they're they're pretty cool characters. Maybe they aren't utilized as much, but they they are cool. They are cool. They were the ultimate um, sneaky, stealthy, incognito yeah. bad guys of Star Trek. Um, when you saw them a little bit in Star Trek Enterprise, because that was set before, obviously, TOS, so you weren't supposed to be able to see them, they were very smart with that, that they were actually yeah. using the, um, the Andorian subspecies that Jeffrey Coombs played one of the characters for. Actually, did he? No, he played an Andori. There was the subspecies that are blind. Um, mm. I can't remember their name. They were very good telepathically, and they would actually control drone ships so that the, the, the Romulans would hide as much as possible, evident by the cloaking device, um, and they would send these drones in to attack uh, the, the NX Enterprise and all its allies. They didn't want this starting of a alliance to happen, which was happening. It wasn't the Federation, right. but it was like the precursor to it. Um, so they're very sly, very sneaky, and I do like them for that. They're really cool. They were never going to be part of the Dominion Alliance originally until yeah. until they pulled off the Masterstroke, Kim and um, the Taylor. I always forget the bloody Taylor's name, the Cardassian. Uh, but he's cool as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, just there was a couple of notable mentions there. Um, you could talk for hours about bad guys of Star Trek, but, you know, we want to keep, yeah. keep it about the hour mark. We'll come back again, obviously, of course, uh, a couple of weeks of time again. Uh, and we'll try and think of a cool idea for a Star Trek special, but if you can think of a cool subject or topic to talk about, just note it below. Um because I, I like comments more than thumbs up or thumbs down, but Gray, Gray does the thumbs up, thumbs down for me, so it's, it's all good. Um, we, no, <laughs> and, and of course, we are on the YouTube platform, but if, you know you don't have to watch our faces. We are we are available on uh, the, wherever you listen to any audio podcasts. I believe YouTube has podcasts as well, uh, or Google, whatever, so you can actually listen to it uh, as well. Uh, we are aimed more at the audio side of things, so... 
you can put your phone upside down and not have to look at us. Um, and <laughs> you see that all. Well, yeah, terrible. yeah. I'm not looking at those guys. Um, but of course, Grey does a podcast as well, which uh, I'm part of, and that's Grey's Green Room. Uh, every month or so, I mean, life gets in the way, but we try to aim for once a month. And it's just entertainment in general. Um, everything you can think of, latest TV shows, movies. We t- touch a lot on cool sci-fi TV shows, Marvel, uh, DC, because we love that stuff as well. And we're on there with our friends as well. You can get them at Grey's Green Room on the YouTube, the audio podcast platforms as well. Um, yep. And don't forget, last but not least, if you're a Star Trek fan, there's a decent chance you're a game or gaming fan as well. And you can come along to our colleague and friend uh, Nick's Discord, uh, Extreme Gaming Podcast. Just search for that and you get the Discord link and it's also in the link below as well. The reason I say that as well is we do a Twitch pod every week. Um, or most weeks anyway, we talk about the latest games and gaming news each week. But the Discord server has the Trekway room in it. We talk Star Trek stuff. It has Gray's Green Room in it under entertainment. You should probably re- rename that, Gray. I'm just saying. Uh, Gray's Green Room channel. Maybe. We talk about stuff like that as well in there. And gaming. So it's all under one umbrella. It's really easy. But I'll link it below. Don't worry. It's always linked below. Uh, we'll wrap up there, Gray. Thank you very much for that, mate. Yep. Um, we'll sure. see you again soon. Uh, and until then, Gray, do your thing. Live long and prosper, everybody. Bye-bye.